When I opened up the locking hub the other day, I recognized that I have to face a couple of problems and I was right. The last couple of days I already heard grinding noises from the bearing, so there was no time to waste and address the issues as soon as possible. By the way, the issues occurred because I tried to use the AD series as a submarine for 30 minutes. I'll guide you through the process of disassembling the hub assembly and up to the point where you can remove the CV. If you want to rebuild the knuckle, don't waste your time here and there are other better videos for that on YouTube. During the process you'll find the tools for the step shown in the video as well as torque specifications. Assembling everything is just a process but backwards. First you should begin by jacking up the car and remove the wheel. I reckon to loosen up the wheels with your breaker bar before. By the way, we will use as less tools as possible than most workshops do. Reason for this is that you can do it out in the bush with only limited and basic hand tools. So since this model is a part-time four-wheel drive, I have manual locking hubs. It can be different in your specification or your country. Many Land Cruiser 80s were also delivered as a permanent four-wheel drive system. So let's go on removing the hub. If you have the manual locking hub, it's uh, just the face. You have to remove the dial. You have to remove it's uh, mounted through six bolts in total. They are 10 millimeter and are tightened to 40 Newton meters. If tightened to specifications, they are pretty easy to get out. So should be no problem. I'm using here an electric wrench just to speed up the process, but you can do it with a hand wrench, no problems. Here we are removing the face of the hub and as you see there is a gasket on it or should be a gasket on it. It's just a paper gasket, don't use silicon if you're assembling that back. So in the next process we are doing the 40 millimeter nuts for the hub which is bolted with 40 millimeters and they are not very tight, that's no problem uh, and you should turn them out almost but not completely and just leave them in a little bit, leave them in. What you do is just give them enough space that the cone washer can be tapped later on as you see now here. So take your hammer and hammer on the hub. So there you see it, the washers come loose. Uh, in my case it's pretty easy because I use a couple of grease on the washers that they do not rust inside so you can get them out pretty easy take out the 40 millimeter bolt and you can remove the washers and the cone washers. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult. I recommend to use WD-40 to loosen up all that stuff and if you have the time just spray all that uh, assembly a day or two before regularly with WD-40 especially if you haven't done this for quite a while. Now we are removing the hub just inspect it and as you see there is a lot of mud and all of yeah all kind of crazy stuff inside and this usually is an indicator to to change the bearings and at least inspect the CVs because uh, they are uh, pretty exposed because the 80 uh, series axle is not very good sealed for that kind of situation so we have now here um, 54 millimeter locking nut, which is on top of a star washer, which you can tap to lock all those nuts that they are not moving there and changing their position. Uh, what I recommend if you're in the bush, uh, turn that out with your screw, uh, screwdriver, not with your hands, because that's, uh, that's a very messy part. Try to stay clean, try to not touch anything. So you see this goes out pretty easily then we take the screwdriver and try to pry out the star washer here you see it usually it's bent over that the 54 millimeter locking nut and the 54 millimeter adjustment nut for the wheel bearing is not moving anymore now you take your 54 millimeter nut and as you see there is not much torque applied this nut here is responsible for the wheel bearings uh, there are specifications for the wheel bearings, how tight they should be, I think, or at least in my opinion, 
in warm conditions just about tight yeah you know you feel it only with the wheel i will do another video just uh, special for adjusting the wheel bearings and as you see now they came out pretty easy and um difference what you might do not see in many videos is i left the brake caliper until this process on uh, why it's pretty easy because it uh, just fixes a little bit all the complete assembly and uh, it's a little bit easier for me at least to work it's just a change of process i do not think it's it's better at least it works for me a little bit better so maybe you can try it out uh, the lower bolt you can enter with an extension and a 70 millimeter socket and the upper one you cannot use the extension uh, there is not enough room so you just end up with the branch and 70 millimeter nut uh, then pry a little bit on the brakes to just loosen up the brake caliper a little bit and push the pads inside so you can remove it pretty easily you can use a regular screwdriver for that as you see no problem they come off pretty easy uh, usually you can use some kind of strap or in this case i prefer zip ties because i always have re reusable zip ties they are really really good and i just zip tie them on the spring uh, use one of the upper coils of the spring so that you have more than enough room later to uh, put on the tire and adjust the bearings preload properly uh, As you see I'm only one man you only need one man you need nothing else just limited tools It's a pretty easy job and now what you see is I'm wiggling around and Trying to not force it out just wiggle it a little bit and then you can see the front bearing will move a little bit forward and we can remove the washer and the bearing is almost loose so now you just pull a little bit small bit on the brake and as you see you can pry out the wheel bearing again uh, why am i not just uh, pulling out the wheel bearing completely uh, i can tell you because if this bearing would be good and you're in the desert it would be just a pure mess to get out the sand of the bearing and if this bearing is the only thing you have better you regrease it or try to at least uh, fix it somehow but if it was in the sand you can throw it away it's gone so be careful to not drop any stuff and if you have greasy parts you have to re reuse like bearings put them in a the plastic bag yeah if uh, as you see now after i removed the front bearing i'm now putting on the 54 millimeter bolt again uh, just in case you're wondering why I'm doing that, you'll see it soon because this way we can pull out the um, brake, as you see. Yeah, and the 54 millimeter nut blocks the bearing and forces the seal, which is in the back, to come out. And this is, I think, the only way to remove the seal more or less undamaged and reusable. Why is this important? Because if you use a seal puller, uh, you destroy usually the seal. If you do not remove the seal, you cannot get out the rear bearing. And as you see, they are just hanging there. Remove the 54 millimeter locking nut again. Don't try to touch anything. It's really amazing how much water get inside this up. But that's the result if you are lazy, and I was lazy here. 30 minutes underwater and this is the result it's full of crap and mud and whatnot so there is a seal it's pretty much intact and uh, now we are faced with the spindle the part we are cleaning now it's called the spindle and on this spindle the bearings or the complete hub assembly was rested so just uh, try to wipe it down first and then use uh, some wet solvent to clean up all that stuff just that you have a place to work with you know if everything is uh, greasy and there is uh, sand or mud or whatever that's that's no place to work so clean up everything a little bit and 
then we proceed again with the 40 millimeter nuts and remove all the nuts on the brake shield and the dust seal you see the thing in the front is the dust seal and behind is uh, the brake shield uh, now you see I'm, I'm using for this video only short range uh, those can be very tight if they haven't been off for a time and um, if you're not the strongest man like I am, uh, I try to use hammer with my hands down and uh, sometimes you can get the torque loose and uh, that helps you quite a bit. So, and in this case, the last time I did this, I reused two almost round bolts and now you see why lazy is not a good thing. Um, you can come around that and use a 30 millimeter nut and hammer it on the bolt and this is the way you can solve the problem and then just turn it out but that should be the last way as you see here I'm just hammering it on until it's really tight using a breaker bar and then loosen it up so then I can remove everything of it again with electric wrench just to speed things up pretty easy process usually this seal I don't know why but it seems like after two years it um, becomes very brittly and not reusable anymore I don't like to reuse those I recommend to uh, change them as well as the other seals and gasket but if you have no alternative and you're in the middle of nowhere try to restore parts and learn how to restore parts and reuse parts at least that they can get you home so this was the seal this is the brake shield and now what you see what I'm pulling off this is the CV so it's a constant velocity joint and this part is responsible to transfer power to your wheel so this one is not tightened anywhere there are no screws uh, you just uh, remove the spindle so this is the spindle where we are now trying to pry a little bit I like to hammer a little bit on the surface a little bit as you see a little bit goes a long way and the spindle comes off pretty easily so you now remove the spindle just comes right off and there is your CV and a lot of grease uh, I recommend to place an oil pan under this part because uh, sometimes if your oil seal is bad inside the axle you should consider change that too but I'm not showing that uh, there can be oil inside and just clean that out and basically you are done with the disassembly this is how you disassemble it and everything else is just reassemble it back again